Hi, I'm Rachel Walling. And I'm Megan McNish, and we're preservation planners with the City of Columbia. And we are putting together a few videos. Um, we are not able to do public meetings at the moment. Um, and while we miss everybody, we want everybody to know that we are still here. So we're going to be covering some of our favorite topics uh, with a series of videos. And this is one of our particular favorite topics is the Bailey Bill tax statement. So we're going to run through a quick introduction to what the Bailey Bill is um, and some frequently asked questions. So to start off with, what is the Bailey Bill? Um, it's a preservation tax incentive that requires that property owners reinvest 20% of the building's value back into the property on eligible expenses within two years of preliminary certification. It's a lot of information all at once. We're going to be breaking that down um, in a little bit, um, but just to kind of give you a broad overview of what that is. Um, if the 20% investment threshold is met, um, in that two year period, the assessed value of your property uh, is frozen for 20 years. So all of the work that you do for the Bailey Bill should be eligible and approved before it starts. Um, so put simply, um, you're investing money back into your property, um, increasing its value. It keeps um, the original pre-rehabilitation tax rate. So the Design Development Review Commission is our architectural review board. Um, they handle reviews of the Bailey Bill. So every time we have an application come in, um, we're helping people through that process and we're sending it to um, our commission to give it the uh, official check of approval. Um, and what they will approve is preliminary certification. So preliminary certification um, is the start of the two year investment period. So you'll, you submit a scope of work to us and the DDRC, when they're checking it off, are approving that scope. And that is, um, once they approve that, that is your preliminary certification. And once, once that hits, you have two years to do the work um, to your property. Um, the Bailey Bill, is, I think it's important to note, is a tax abatement. It is not a tax credit. Um, so in this case, it freezes the tax value of the property for 20 years. Um, once the preliminary certification is met. So at the date of the meeting where the DDRC approves it, um, that is when your property um, tax rate is frozen. Sorry, tax value. Um, the investment threshold is the uh, amount that's required to invest back into your property um, to enable to get final certification for the bill, for the Bailey bill. So um, as, as Megan mentioned, this is a 20% investment threshold. So it is based on just the value, not the land. Um, so if your building is worth $100,000, um, you would have to invest $20,000 back into your building within the two year period to um, get the full benefits for 20 years of the Bailey Bill. So one question we frequently get about the Bailey Bill is, how do I know if my building qualifies? So both commercial and residential properties are eligible for the Bailey Bill. And buildings should meet one of the following criteria in order to get the incentive. Um, they should either be individually listed in the National Register of Historic Places, a contributing property in a National Register district, an individual City of Columbia historic landmark, or a contributing property in a local historic district. Sometimes all of these things, uh, or many of these things overlap. So you may be um, both a contributing property in a National Register district, as well as an individual landmark or you know, any combination of these four things. So if you meet one of those criteria, you are very likely eligible for the Bailey Bill. And I would say too, um, we, we have 15 local historic districts um, and 180 landmarks and there's a lot more that are National Register districts and, and National Register listed properties. We don't ever see those normally, but there's a lot of opportunity throughout the city um, for people to participate in this program. There's a lot of lot of history, a lot of good buildings that are waiting for, for investment. So if you don't know if your building is, is one of these, just, just ask us, just give us a call. And we'll get into the different kinds of eligible expenses in a little bit, but um, if you're going to be doing work to your property and you think that um, you know after watching this that some of those expenses might be eligible it's certainly something worth um, exploring because you know the work you do on on your home adds up um, so you know why not explore um, explore this opportunity so we have 
kind of two different categories that expenses normally fall in. Um, they're either maintenance and repair, looking at the specifically the historic materials that make up the, the historic building. So that can be um, window restoration is a big one, um, re repairing and refinishing floors, um, adding storm windows to protect your, your historic windows, um, which also add some thermal benefits as well, uh, repointing bricks, so anything that you're, you're, you're doing to maintain the um, historic materials that make up your building, those will qualify, um, as well as um, actions that make the building habitable and safe. So some big, big ticket items, you're protecting the envelope of the building. So roofing, your roofing may not technically be historic, but you need good roofing so your building isn't leaking and destroying your inside. Um, so roofing's you know, a big expense that can qualify for the Bailey Bill, as well as um, structural work, foundation repairs. We wanna make sure the building stays whole, stays complete, um, and stays intact for as long as possible. So those, those big ticket items can, can really count um, towards your investment threshold. But also um, updating plumbing, electrical, and mechanical systems. So, you know, those the the pipes, the wires, you know, that go into the building to to make it functioning um, for modern day um, use. So th those will all all qualify. And sometimes, you know, it only takes one big ticket item to get people to to their investment threshold. Um, so if you have like like Megan said, if you have a project in mind, just just give us a call and we can we can talk through it. Yeah, I think we've both had projects that have qualified just on HVAC updates alone. So Basically, um, yeah. you know, it, it never hurts to ask. Right. Um, there are some expenses though, that are not eligible for the Bailey Bill. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that these are things you can't do to your home. They just won't help you meet the investment threshold. So generally speaking, any work to additions or non-original portions of a structure and cosmetic items are not eligible. So um, an example of that would be um, plumbing and lighting fixtures. Like Rachel said, the actual um, you know, pipes in the walls and wires and um, electrical boxes, those things are eligible. But um, you know, if you have a, a chandelier in mind for over your dining room table, um, unfortunately, it doesn't qualify as an eligible expense, but feel free to, to go ahead and put that in your home. Um, another great example would be things like countertops, tile, um, other interior finishes, um, like new drywall and things like that. Um, and then also um, cost to construct an addition. Um, additions may be allowed to your property, but the expenses associated with them aren't going to help you meet the investment threshold. So some frequently asked questions um, that we get about the Bailey Bill. First one being, what are the fees um, to apply for Bailey Bill? There is a application fee. Um, if you are a residential or duplex structure, um, it is $150 per building. In, and for commercial buildings or multifamily buildings, there is a $300 application fee for structure. Um, second question, what changes are permitted to my house under the Bailey Bill? So as Megan um, briefly mentioned, Additions are a big change that people often undertake when they're doing the Bailey Bill. It's something we we help people through that process a lot. A lot of times they're doing an addition, they're doing a renovation of their house, and they glom it all together, and we take it to the DDRC for approval all at once. So that is a process we help people through. A lot of people do additions to their buildings when they have the Bailey Bill. Um, another thing to keep in mind with this is um, if you are a national register structure, um, you would not typically have city preservation review. So under the Bailey Bill, if you want to maintain your Bailey Bill, any changes you want to make for the duration of the 20 year period um, needs to go through preservation staff and the DDRC. So it's just a matter of keeping us informed of, of what, what you're hoping to do with your property and we can help you through that process. Yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, it's important for folks in local historic districts that are pursuing the Bailey Bill to remember to contact us. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing work um, to your property, um, in addition to complying with the, the local district guidelines, um, you'll also need to comply with the Bailey Bill requirements. So just contact us, send us an email, you know, give us a call on the phone and, and let us know um, you know, before you start work, what you're planning on doing. This way we can, you know, make sure you're going through the right process and, and you continue to enjoy the benefits of the Bailey Bill. 
Right. And so, yeah, there are, uh, you know, rare occasions where you might make a change that would not normally be permitted and it might put the Bailey Bill incentive in jeopardy. Um, we don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. So, yeah, just keep us informed um, and we can help you through the process for any changes that you might want to make. Um, and our last question is, what if I sell my house during the 20 year abatement period? So good news is that um, the Bailey Bill stays with the property. So if you sell your property, the um, reduced value of your property for tax reasons will stay with the property for the remainder of 20 years. So sometimes a good, good selling point for people um, when they're selling their properties. So thanks for joining us um, today. We hope this video was helpful. We hope that um, you learned a little something. Um, stay tuned. We're going to be coming out with some, um, some more videos in the near future. Um, but if there are topics you'd like to see us cover, please feel free to email us at preservation at columbiasc.gov. Um, and Rachel's email and my email are both included as well. Um, so if you have questions specifically for us, please feel free to reach out. Thanks. Please be in touch. Thank you.